Princess Margaret was often perceived negatively by many, labeled as impatient, domineering, and perhaps even incompetent. While there may be truth in these characterizations, it cannot be denied that her loyalty to Queen Elizabeth II was unwavering. Despite not bearing the burden of the throne herself, Margaret endured numerous trials throughout her life in the royal spotlight, leading her to defy tradition on several occasions. Her distinct personality remained unchanged until her passing, causing her death to cause many controversies later. Let's explore the untold secrets of Margaret's death. The somber news of Princess Margaret's passing on February 9, 2002, reverberated across the United Kingdom and beyond, marking the end of an era and prompting an outpouring of condolences and reflections on her life. The announcement of her death, delivered by Queen Elizabeth II's press secretary, carried the weight of sorrow as it began with the monarch's profound sadness and a request for immediate dissemination. Princess Margaret, the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, had succumbed to the quiet embrace of sleep at 6.30 a.m. Her passing, while peaceful, marked the conclusion of a tumultuous yet undoubtedly influential chapter in British royal history. At the age of 71, Princess Margaret had left behind a legacy that intertwined with both tradition and modernity. In the final hours leading up to her passing, Princess Margaret had been under medical care at the King Edward VII Hospital. Admitted just a few hours before her death, her stay was prompted by a stroke suffered the preceding day. Tragically, the stroke had precipitated further complications, including heart issues, ultimately leading to her untimely demise. The presence of Princess Margaret's children, Lord Linley and Lady Sarah Chatto, at her bedside during her final moments, underscored the gravity of her health struggles. Their vigil beside their mother served as a poignant reminder of the familial bonds that endured despite the trials faced by the royal family. Although Queen Elizabeth II was not physically present at the time of her sister's passing, the statement assured the public that Her Majesty had been kept abreast of the situation throughout the night. The absence of the Queen underscored the profound loss experienced not only by the royal family but also by the nation at large. Four years prior to her passing, while basking in the tranquil allure of Mustique, a paradisiacal retreat, Princess Margaret encountered the first ominous whisper of mortality, a mild stroke. The episode, reported by The Independent, unfolded against the backdrop of concern and hasty intervention as she was swiftly transported to Barbados for medical care. Remarkably, despite the gravity of the situation, Princess Margaret displayed a tenacious spirit, evidenced by her ability to traverse the tarmac unaided, a testament to her innate strength. Yet, beneath the surface, the specter of her chain-smoking habit loomed ominously, casting shadows of doubt upon her health. The notion that her consumption of up to 60 cigarettes a day might have hastened the onset of the stroke lingered, a stark reminder of the perils of addiction. While Princess Margaret had relinquished her vice by the time of her initial stroke, the damage wrought by decades of smoking had already been etched into the fabric of her being. Reports surfaced, painting a portrait of a youthful princess ensnared by the allure of tobacco at the tender age of 15, a habit that would haunt her for years to come. Yet smoking was not the sole adversary in Princess Margaret's battle for vitality. The revelation of her penchant for heavy drinking further illuminated the precarious tightrope upon which she treads. As the warmth of alcohol coursed through her veins, it also insidiously eroded the barriers protecting her from the ravages of stroke, adding yet another layer to the intricate mosaic of her health struggles. As the years unfolded, Princess Margaret found herself ensnared in the relentless grip of fate, with subsequent strokes casting dark shadows upon her path. In 2000 and again in 2001, the specter of mortality once more reared its head as Princess Margaret grappled with the capricious whims of her ailing health. Each stroke served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life, underscoring the impermanence of earthly existence. In the years leading up to her death, 
Princess Margaret's health steadily declined, beset by a series of physical and emotional challenges that profoundly impacted her final years. Her obituary in The Guardian chronicles a litany of health issues that began with a bout of pneumonia in 1993. This illness, severe and debilitating, marked the beginning of a difficult period for the princess, foreshadowing further health complications. Health com in 1998, Princess Margaret suffered her first stroke, an event that significantly altered her life. The stroke left her with a slight speech impediment, a poignant reminder of her vulnerability. Just a year later, another grave incident occurred. A severe accident in her bathroom resulted in serious burns to her feet. According to the royal family's official website, this bathroom accident left her with injuries so severe that walking became increasingly difficult. The physical repercussions of this accident were profound, and Margaret's public appearances grew infrequent. When she did venture out, she was often seen in a wheelchair, symbolizing the dramatic impact of her health struggles. Amidst these physical health challenges, Princess Margaret also battled mental health issues, particularly depression. The 1970s were especially tumultuous for her, as she reportedly sought psychiatric treatment for depression during this decade, according to The Guardian. This period of her life highlighted the often overlooked mental health struggles faced by members of the royal family. Reports of another bout of depression at the turn of the millennium surfaced, although these were officially denied by royal sources. However, the royal family's approach to mental health during that era was notably reticent and dismissive. Andrew Morton, a royal biographer, provided a stark assessment of the royal family's attitude towards mental health. In his book, Elizabeth and Margaret, The Intimate World of the Windsor Sisters, he wrote that the royal family offered Margaret little support for her mental health struggles. Let's face it, Margaret had depression and in the royal family, you are not allowed to be depressed, Morton asserted. His commentary underscored a broader cultural reluctance within the royal household to acknowledge and address mental illness. Morton further noted, they lived in a world where illness was dealt with by going for a long walk and mental illness was ignored. Princess Margaret's life was not only marked by her personal challenges and royal duties, but also by her unwavering dedication to numerous charitable causes. Throughout her life, she championed a wide array of organizations, with her involvement spanning more than 80 different groups, according to the royal family's website. Her commitment to these causes reflected her deep sense of duty and compassion for various social issues. After her passing, several of Princess Margaret's favored charities were highlighted, and the royal family requested that mourners wishing to honor her memory make donations to these organizations. Among the most notable were the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, NSPCC, the Guide Association, and the Royal Ballet. These selections underscored the breadth of her interests and her lasting impact on these institutions. The NSPCC, dedicated to ending child abuse and neglect, benefited greatly from her support. Princess Margaret's involvement with the organization helped raise awareness and funds, contributing to its mission of protecting vulnerable children across the United Kingdom. Her advocacy for children's welfare demonstrated her deep concern for societal well-being and her desire to effect positive change. The Guide Association, known in the UK as Girl Guiding, was another cause close to Princess Margaret's heart. Her association with Girl Guiding began in childhood and extended throughout her life. Both Princess Margaret and Queen Elizabeth joined the Guides in 1937, with Margaret starting as a brownie. This early involvement laid the foundation for a lifelong commitment to the organization, reflecting her belief in empowering young girls through education, community service, and leadership development. Princess Margaret's dedication to girl guiding was particularly notable. She served as the president of the Girl Guides Association, a role in which she provided leadership and inspiration to countless young members. 
In recognition of her contributions, she was awarded the Silver Fish in 1968, the highest honor bestowed by the association. This accolade highlighted her significant impact and enduring legacy within the organization. The passing of Princess Margaret elicited a profound sense of loss and nostalgia among many who had admired her throughout her life. In the wake of her death, a memorial website was established to provide a space for mourners to express their condolences. This digital platform invited people to email their messages, creating a modern avenue for collective mourning and remembrance. Mourning and re for those preferring a more traditional means of paying their respects, condolence books were made available at St. James's Palace. These books offered a tangible way for the public to convey their sorrow and share their memories of Princess Margaret. The outpouring of grief and the heartfelt messages inscribed in these books underscored the deep connection that many felt with the princess. Among the mourners, Barbara Girelli Kent, who signed the condolence book, spoke to the press about her admiration for Princess Margaret. Reflecting on the princess's influence during the 1960s, Girelli Kent remarked, Princess Margaret was of my era in the 1960s. She was symbolic of correctness and strength of character, and she had a mind of her own, but great respect for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Institution. She was a trooper, via CNN. Jarelli Kent's words encapsulated the image of Princess Margaret as a figure of elegance, resilience, and independence, someone who balanced personal individuality with a deep respect for her royal duties and her sister, the Queen. Another mourner, Anthea Mander Lahr, highlighted Princess Margaret's unique and vibrant personality, noting, she was a colorful character, not much older than myself, added a bit of spice to life with her scandals. It's such a nationalistic thing to say, but it gives you pride in being British. Lars' comments shed light on the princess's role as a captivating and sometimes controversial figure within the royal family. Her public life, marked by both glamorous moments and well-publicized challenges, resonated with many who saw her as a symbol of British identity and spirit. The Guardian reported on the myriad public tributes that flowed in, reflecting the princess's significant influence and the deep affection many held for her. Her nephew, King Charles III, expressed his deep sorrow, a sentiment shared by then-Prime Minister Tony Blair. Blair conveyed his heartfelt condolences, stating, I'm deeply saddened to hear of the death of Princess Margaret. My thoughts are with the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and the rest of the royal family at this time. Blair's statement highlighted the close family bonds and the personal loss experienced by the royal family. Princess Margaret's death also brought about a rare moment of unity among Britain's political figures, transcending party lines. I.A.N. Duncan Smith, a leading member of the Conservative Party, paid tribute to her contributions to the nation, saying, An active member of the royal family and a strong servant of her country, she will be sorely missed. Our deepest sympathy and condolences go to Her Majesty the Queen, the Queen Mother, and the rest of the royal family at this sad time. His remarks underscored her dedication to public service and the significant role she played within the monarchy. Similarly, Charles Kennedy, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, expressed his condolences, emphasizing the universal nature of grief. I was very sad to hear of the death of Princess Margaret. We all suffer when we lose a close relative, and I offer the Queen, the Queen Mother, and the Royal Family my greatest sympathy. Kennedy's words reflected the shared human experience of loss, offering a sense of solidarity with the Royal Family during their time of mourning. Despite her often tumultuous and scandal-ridden life, Princess Margaret was remembered fondly by those who knew her personally. Many public figures and the media highlighted her rebellious nature, which often brought her into the limelight for less favorable reasons. However, her cousin, Lady Elizabeth Shakerley, sought to provide a more balanced view of her character. 
Speaking to CNN, Shakerly contested the portrayal of Margaret as merely a troubled princess. She said, I think a troubled princess is a sad way to describe her. She lived life to the full, and she was such a fun person. She had a great capacity for making people laugh and making a situation wonderful. While the death of a beloved royal family member typically warrants a large state funeral. Princess Margaret's final wishes diverged from this tradition. Preferring a more intimate and understated ceremony, she requested a private funeral attended solely by her relatives and those who had been closest to her throughout her life. Despite her request for privacy, the significance of her passing did not go unnoticed. An official period of royal mourning was declared on February 9, 2002, the day of her death. This mourning period extended until February 15th, the day of her funeral, reflecting the deep respect and sorrow felt by the royal family and the nation. Although the funeral was private, it still drew a substantial number of attendees, underscoring the impact Princess Margaret had on those around her. According to CNN, nearly 500 people gathered at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle to pay their final respects. This assembly included family members, close friends, and members of her staff, all of whom came to honor the princess's memory. The choice of St. George's Chapel, a site steeped in royal history and tradition, provided a fitting backdrop for her farewell. The chapel, known for its architectural grandeur and historical significance, offered a solemn and dignified setting for the service. In a poignant twist of fate, Princess Margaret's funeral was held on the 50th anniversary of her father, King George VI's own burial. This coincidence added a layer of historical resonance to the proceedings, linking her passing to a significant moment in the royal family's history. The alignment of these dates highlighted the enduring connections and continuity within the royal lineage, as well as the cyclical nature of life and death within the monarchy. Among the select group of mourners invited to attend Princess Margaret's private funeral were some of the most significant figures from her personal life, including her ex-husband, Antony Armstrong Jones, Earl of Snowden, and her former boyfriend, Roddy Llewellyn. The inclusion of Llewellyn, in particular, underscored the complexities of Princess Margaret's relationships and the lasting connections she maintained with those who had played pivotal roles in her life. Roddy Llewellyn's presence at the funeral was especially noteworthy given the tumultuous history he shared with Princess Margaret. Their relationship, which began in 1973 while she was still married to the Earl of Snowden, captured the fascination of the press and provoked significant controversy within the royal family. The BBC reported that the affair became a major scandal once it was exposed, leading to the eventual dissolution of her marriage. This divorce was historically significant, as Princess Margaret became the first member of the royal family to divorce in hundreds of years, with the last being King Henry VIII in the 16th century, who famously broke from the Catholic Church to establish the Church of England in order to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. The scandal was further fueled by the notable age difference between Margaret and Llewellyn. According to the Evening Standard, Llewellyn was in his 20s when the relationship began, making him 17 years younger than Margaret. Despite the public scrutiny and the challenges it brought, their relationship endured for eight years. When Llewellyn eventually broke off the relationship to marry someone else, it did not end their connection. Vanity Fair noted that Princess Margaret remained on good terms with Llewellyn and his bride, demonstrating her capacity for maintaining friendships despite past romantic entanglements. The presence of Antony Armstrong Jones, Earl of Snowden, at the funeral highlighted another significant chapter in Margaret's life. Their marriage, which began with great promise, eventually succumbed to personal differences and infidelities. Despite their divorce, the enduring respect and mutual affection they shared was evident in his attendance at her funeral honoring their shared history and the family they had together. Princess Margaret's friend, Lady Anne Glenconnor, offered an insightful glimpse into the royal family's perspective 
on her relationship with Llewellyn. In the documentary Elizabeth Our Queen, Glenn Connor recalled a poignant moment after Margaret's funeral when Queen Elizabeth expressed her gratitude for Glenn Connor's role in introducing her sister to Llewellyn. The Queen reportedly said, I'd just like to say, Anne, it was rather difficult at moments, but he made her really happy. This statement from the Queen highlighted the importance of Llewellyn in Margaret's life, acknowledging the happiness he brought her despite the difficulties their relationship caused. The British royal family is renowned for their stoicism, epitomized by the enduring, stiff upper lip they maintain regardless of the personal or public challenges they face. This enduring composure, however, was profoundly tested by the death of Princess Margaret, which deeply affected her sister, Queen Elizabeth II. The bond between the two sisters was exceptionally close, making Margaret's passing a particularly devastating loss for the monarch. Publicly, Queen Elizabeth expressed her grief with the characteristic restraint expected of a royal. In the official announcement of Margaret's death, the Queen mentioned her great sadness, a phrase that, while conveying sorrow, adhered to the formal and understated tone typically employed by the royal family. However, the Queen's actions at Margaret's private funeral revealed the depth of her heartbreak. Princess Josephine Lowenstein, a close friend of Princess Margaret, provided a poignant insight into the Queen's rare display of emotion in the documentary Elizabeth, Our Queen. She recalled that Margaret once confided in her that she had only seen Elizabeth cry once in their entire lives. This detail underscores how unusual it was for the Queen to show her emotions publicly. However, at Margaret's funeral, Queen Elizabeth broke this long-standing tradition of emotional restraint. Reynaldo Herrera, a friend of the royal family, wrote in Vanity Fair about witnessing this rare moment of vulnerability. He described how, during the funeral at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, the Queen was overcome with emotion. I think it was the only time anyone ever saw the Queen show her emotions in public, Herrera noted. He depicted a poignant scene where, as the Queen stood by the steps of the chapel, watching her sister's coffin being borne away, her eyes filled with tears. In a notable departure from royal tradition, Princess Margaret expressed her wish to be cremated rather than buried. While there is no official prohibition against cremation within the royal family, it has not been a common practice for decades. The Scotsman reported that no royal family member had been cremated since Princess Louise, Duchess of Argyle, Queen Victoria's daughter, passed away in 1939. Princess Margaret's decision was influenced by her aversion to the traditional royal burial ground at Frogmore. Lady Anne Glen Connor, a close friend of the princess, explained that Margaret found Frogmore to be very gloomy and did not wish to be interred there. Instead, Margaret desired her final resting place to be at the royal crypt in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, where her beloved father, King George VI, was laid to rest. Lady Anne Glen Connor further elaborated on Margaret's decision in the documentary Elizabeth, Our Queen. She revealed that the choice for cremation was partly pragmatic. The royal crypt at St. George's Chapel had limited space available, and there was only room for ashes. Glen Connor noted, I think she'd like to be with the late king, which she will now be. This choice of cremation allowed Princess Margaret to rest alongside her father, a decision that reflected her deep familial bonds and personal preferences. The royal crypt, a site of significant royal heritage and history, provided a fitting and respectful final resting place that aligned with her wishes. While Princess Margaret's funeral was a private affair attended only by her closest family and friends, a public memorial service was later organized to allow a broader circle of admirers and acquaintances to pay their respects. Her friend, Lady Anne Glen Connor, explained the princess's preference for privacy during her funeral. I think she wanted her family and her friends at her funeral. Glen Connor told the Scotsman before the memorial service. 
Obviously, later on, there will be a memorial service when her charities will be represented, but for her actual funeral she wanted it to be as private as possible. The public memorial service took place at noon on April 19, 2002, at Westminster Abbey. The service was meticulously planned according to Princess Margaret's wishes, highlighting her personal involvement in its arrangement. The program for the event noted, The service is set around the Requiem by Gabriel Foray, 1845-1924, in accordance with the wishes of Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon. This choice of music reflected Margaret's appreciation for Foray's composition, known for its serene and gentle tones, which provided a fitting tribute to her life and legacy. She also selected the choirs that performed during the service, ensuring the musical elements were to her taste. The memorial service saw a significant turnout, with roughly 2,000 mourners gathering to honor Princess Margaret's memory. In attendance were her family, including her children Lord Linley and Lady Sarah Chatto, and her sister, Queen Elizabeth II. The event was also marked by the presence of notable public figures, such as then Prime Minister Tony Blair, reflecting the widespread respect and admiration for the princess. The passing of Princess Margaret, followed closely by the death of Queen Elizabeth II's mother, also named Elizabeth, marked a period of profound grief and loss for the royal family. Queen Elizabeth II's deep sorrow was palpable as she navigated these back-to-back -back tragedies, which struck at the heart of the Windsor dynasty. The, Windsor. the announcement of Queen Elizabeth's passing came just a month after Princess Margaret's death on March 30, 2002. Buckingham Palace released a statement conveying the Queen's profound sadness. The Queen, with the greatest sadness, has asked for the following announcement to be made immediately. Her beloved mother, Queen Elizabeth, died peacefully in her sleep this afternoon at Royal Lodge, Windsor. Members of the royal family have been informed, as reported by The Guardian. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, had reached the remarkable age of 101 at the time of her passing. Despite her advanced age and declining health, she remained determined to attend Princess Margaret's funeral, a testament to her enduring love and devotion to her family. Historian Hugo Vickers revealed in the documentary Elizabeth Our Queen that the Queen Mother had been ill with a chest infection in December, but remained resolute in her desire to pay her final respects to her beloved daughter. Lady Anne Glen Connor provided further insight into the Queen Mother's poignant gesture during Princess Margaret's funeral. Despite her frailty, she made a valiant effort to rise from her wheelchair as her daughter's coffin passed by. This act of reverence and love underscored the deep bond between mother and daughter, even in death. The sequence of these losses, occurring in such close succession, added to the weight of grief experienced by the royal family. Princess Margaret's memorial service, held just ten days after the Queen Mother's funeral, provided a poignant reminder of the profound sense of loss that permeated the royal household. What do you think about Princess Margaret's sudden death? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.